Hi there. In this video, I will demonstrate how to set up Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Intune to protect an unenrolled iOS device. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint or MDE has been around for a little while now and provides some extensive features and integration across the Microsoft security platform. When it comes to securing mobile devices, particularly Android and iOS, there are also great capability like protecting against phishing, unsafe network connections, and malicious apps. And back in 2021, Microsoft released new features which extended the app protection policies to work with these unenrolled device types. So by establishing a connection between MDE and Intune, risk signals are shared, and when combined with conditional launch for specific apps, your devices and enterprise data are protected. So today I'll concentrate on MDE for iOS as an unenrolled device, but check out my follow-up video soon to be released on the configuration and testing for an enrolled Android device. So let's start with the configuration in, in Intune. Okay, so to start off, we're gonna do a few checks within the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. Just gonna go into Users, just to highlight the user I'm gonna use for this overall demonstration. Um, and we use Nesta Wilk here. Um, so let's have a look at his licenses just to see that he's uh, capable of running the tests. Uh, and we've got an EMS license, so we've got Intune, we've got uh, the Defender for Endpoint P2 license, and we've also got Office. If we have a look at the groups, We have the CH test group here, and I've added um, Nesta into that. So we look at the members, and there we go, we've got Nesta there. So let's now have a quick look at the uh, security.microsoft.com. This is where you will log on to see all the alerts that come in from Microsoft uh, Defender for Endpoint. And you'll either see in incidents or you'll see um, within alerts. So there's no incidents there. If we look at the alerts, I did have some earlier, but they're now wiped out. So you can see that that is clear, okay? But we'll come back to this at some point. So there are a few other checks that we need to uh, check out here. Um, and that is specifically that we've got the Microsoft 365 Defender connected to Intune. So they can uh, share data, um, signals that come through and alerts so that we can then act on that within uh, Microsoft Intune. So we're gonna go into settings, endpoints, and then within there, we're gonna to navigate to advanced features. And if you go down the page, you should find a, a specific connector for uh, Microsoft Intune. And there we go, Microsoft Intune connection. Now this needs to be on. I'm not gonna go through the details of this because that's covered in, a, in another video, but this needs to be on. So I just wanted to double check that. If we go back into the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center, and then I'll just navigate through to Endpoint Security. And then you've got an option for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And within there, we specifically need to make sure that we've got the app protection policy setting for the device that we're gonna uh, onboard onto Defender for Endpoint. And the reason for that is we are effectively deploying a mobile application management policy. Because the device is not enrolled into Intune, it's just onboarded into MDE and registered within uh, Azure Active Directory, we need to make sure this switched on. Now I'm gonna be testing the uh, iOS here, so I've got that switched on. So make sure those two, con two connectors are on, you save that, um, and then you should get a connection status as enabled. Right, at this point, um, we're gonna hop over to apps and specifically, we're gonna look at the app protection policies because effectively the, the policy that's been deployed, we've got an unenrolled device um, and we are effectively deploying a mobile application management policy to that device, okay? But Microsoft have extended the, the ability to connect MDE through app protection policy. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna create a policy and we want iOS, give it a name. I 
version two. I've been testing this before, so I'll just create a version two. Now, most of the settings um, I'm gonna pretty much keep as default. The reason being, through the wizard, as we go through these panes, we wanna effectively get to conditional launch, okay? So, target to apps of all device types. I'm gonna say no, and the reason, because I want to have that set as unmanaged. Okay, I do want the selected apps because I'm only going to choose the um, choose Outlook um, um, for the, the app that we're going to protect and test. Okay, so I'm going to select Outlook there and we're going to go through to the uh, data protection. I will pretty much keep these as they are. I don't really want to do backup all data iTunes um, iCloud backup, so I'll block that send all data to other apps. I just want that to be um, policy managed apps. Um, what else we got here? Um, restrict, cut, copy and paste between other apps. Yes, policy managed apps with pasting, we'll keep that. We'll keep these pretty much the same as well, apart from I don't really want to uh, print in all data, so I'll, I'll block that. Okay, so then we'll move on. And we'll get to access requirements. So these are basically the you know security that's been added around launching and running the application. So I do want pin for access. I want a pin type numeric, symbol pin, yes allow, but I'm gonna choose a, a minimum pin length of eight. And the reason being I've already got six on the device, but I wanna show that we have to create that additional pin for the application. Okay, now I don't have Touch ID, so I'm going to block that. Uh, we'll leave the rest the same, I think. Yes, I think they'll, they're sufficient. So we're going to conditional launch. And this is really where we want to get to. Now you ha already have app conditions, okay? And these are kind of default and um, uh, default, and these are, are, are fairly well defined. So what we want to define is the device conditions. Um, and if you click the, um, select the options here, you've got maximum allowed device threat level. This is the one we essentially want because the connector between MDE and Intune is allowing that data to be shared and the app um, protection policy is gonna create a um, conditional launch based on the information that's come from the device um, an MDE application on the device through to MDE and then the connector is going to allow Intune to um, make a decision based on, on the threat level. So we have maximum allowed device threat level. Now I'm going to set this to low because if the threat is low we don't really want to do anything. Um, if it's above low, medium or high then that's when we're going to um, um, we're going to have an action against it. So what happens we can wipe the data on the device or we can block access i'm just going to go for block access for now so we're just going to use that one um, and then we're going to go into assignments now as you remember we had that ch group and uh, nesta wilkes so we're going to add the group that um, he's added to here so we're going to it's that and that's the ch test okay and then at that point we're going to, we can review what we've set up and then we can hit the create button. Okay, so we've popped back onto my screen here and you'll automatically see I've got, I'm mirroring uh, my iOS device to my desktop. And I've also got a browser open, which is showing the uh, Windows, Microsoft 365 Defender. So we've got no alerts in there at the moment. And we're hoping to kind of do a test of a test vulnerability and hopefully see the, the alerts come up within that portal. So first off, what we're going to do, the scenario we're going to follow is we're going to install um, an Office app through, uh, through the App Store that should prompt us to automatically install uh, MDE or Microsoft Defender for Endpoint on the device. Um, so it will prevent us from installing the Office app until we've done that. And that's because we've linked and connected the two portals together. Now, if um, just from a kind of licensing perspective, if you've got an E5 or 
um, Microsoft 365 E5 license, and this is kind of uh, um, built in. You you don't have to buy any other licenses. Um, but what we're going to do is go through that test now and see it working. Okay. The first thing I just want to raise is that it will ask you to do add an account, authenticate an account, and what I suggest you do is install Authenticator app and add your credentials in that you're going to use on the device so your your work address for example that you'll need to do that it will make this um, this setup a lot quicker and easier to do in my experience okay so let's go to the App Store I'm going to install the Outlook app Now, if you're enroll, got an enrolled device, then um, you can push this app down to the device, obviously, and use the company portal app. But we're not going to do that here. We're just going to go through to the app store. It's an unenrolled device, so it's a BYOD type scenario. Um, just another thing to highlight is when we um, do install the MDE client on the device, it will take up around 8 to 10% of your CPU or your performance of, of that device, so be aware of that. But generally speaking, it doesn't impinge on, on, the, on the device usage. So we've got Outlook there. We're going to open Outlook. And it's saying it's automatically picked up our account we've registered in Authenticator, so we're going to add that account. Um, we don't want... To to add any more accounts and it's automatically told us that organization is now protecting the data on that app now that's standard procedure you get that whether you're enrolling or not and then it will close down the app to start again there we go and if i start outlook again it's going to prompt me to say get access so set up microsoft defender for endpoint to gain access okay and then i need to download the app so we're going to download the app Now there will be a number, there'll be a wizard that we'll need to follow. So I'm just going to show you the experience here. It's picked up my uh, enterprise account. So I'm going to pick that. And like I say, that will make it a lot easier if uh, you've already in, in, installed Authenticator. So we'll accept that. So at this point, I just want to highlight that it's saying we're going to uh, allow uh, Microsoft Defender to set up a local VPN connection. Now, if I quickly go over to uh, a website, this is Peter Van der Waal's uh, blog site, which is really good. He's got some great blogs. Um, I've highlighted um, some, a section here where it says, so basically MDE for iOS will give you some web protection. Now, the web protection capability relies on a local self-looping VPN that does not take traffic outside the device. So kind of take note of that. And the capability helps with addressing the challenge of phishing uh, by instantly blocking access to unsafe websites, which may be received through SMS, email, browsers, or other apps. So you're getting that level of security through those mediums um, of data that come through on the device. So at this point, I'm going to hit the allow button. Um, it's asking me for my pin, which is my iPhone pin here. And it's saying uh, it would like to send us notifications. Now we want to have notifications because we want to know when we're at risk. And there we have it, it's installed. Um, and automatically it's told us that um, our device health needs um, is, is in red here. It's telling us there's an update. And obviously you need, it's advisable to have the latest version of software. And if you don't, um, you're not necessarily protected to the, to the greatest extent. So that's why it's telling us that there. The first thing I'm going to do is bring this, um, this device up to date to make sure that it's it's been protected. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to um, update this device to make sure it's got the latest version. Um, let's go into software update. It's got the 15.3.1, so I'm gonna install that now.
I'll come back when this is uh, when this has been completed. Okay, so we're back. I have updated my iPhone, um, and you, you can see on the screen there, it's uh, iOS 15.3. One and now it's telling me that the device is protected. So I found a vulnerability, uh, and basically by updating the device, that's been rectified. We've resolved that. Okay, the last step that we have here is to test um, that we've got MDE working on my iOS device, and and we can see that it it gets picked up and what happens in that process. So what I've done is I've sent a link to an email account, my Nesta. Um, Nest W account that we've been set up with here and we're going to open that link and see what happens so let's have a look so opened Outlook um, I've got a specific email I sent myself and we've got a test phishing um, address here so if we're just kind of mirroring a scenario here where this can happen in the real world and we've got this screen, it's tempting a user to click the link and let's see what happens. So it will take us to a website and hopefully we'll see it blocked. And there you see it at the top, malicious site blocked. So Microsoft Defender has blocked the site um, and it's not allowing that person to go onto the site, which therefore it's you know protecting the, the, the device and the data. Now, if I go back into MDE and do this again, um, uh, just to show there, it's showing that I've got one links, uh, one block site. Okay, so it's showing that from within the application itself. But if I turn that, disable that web protection, and then I go back into my email and try, I'll try that link again, and we'll see what happens. So I click the link, it's gone to the website, and this time it's gone straight through. Now because it's a test site, it's literally just saying this is a test test page. But in that scenario, it was enabled and it allowed us through, in which case the device may have been uh, corrupted or um, would have experienced a phishing attack. Um, so there you have it. That's, um, that's it working on the device with MDE. Now if we're back on the um, Microsoft 365 Defender security portal here, if I refresh uh, this screen, we should see that it's been picked up. And there's the, um, and there's the actual test that we've done. It's saying the device tried to access a phishing site um, obviously its severity is down as informational because this is a test site um, but if I click on that that link I can get more details about it um, and it's giving us some more information and I also have the ability to um, if I just do this here to manage this so if we were having this typical phishing um, attack going on then I can manage this alert I can actually go and set it uh, to resolved if it's in my case I'm going to set it to resolve because it's just informational set it to in progress and I can assign um, assign this issue to someone else to make sure that we can deal with this problem uh, and stop other people from the organization um, experience this problem so thanks very much for watching the video hopefully you found it useful Please go ahead and like and subscribe if you like and see the content coming from our channel and we'll see you again soon.